All right, everyone, welcome back. And we've got a special guest here making his debut, I think, on these these YouTube videos. We've got a super fan of Richmond. We've got Big Daz. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, Pommy. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's our pleasure. It's always nice to chat with new faces. And obviously, you're a big Tiger fan. Obviously, 2022, you made the finals. You were kind of went a little bit under the radar, really, in terms of the media and the expectation. How did you see 2022 as a Tiger fan? Yeah, it was um, it was a it was a weird one. It was sort of we were thereabouts and up and down. I think we had a two four start, so we sort of lost, dropped the couple and um, uh, to the Blues in round one, which I'm sure you remember. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since we dropped that one, and yeah, and then we had a bit of a run where we won a few games in a row, and then um, yeah, and then we 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 had you know we had a. A run of losses and draws and all sorts of after the siren kicks and and then in the run of the finals um we had a good run into the finals winning four and on the trot and then yeah and then the the game in Brisbane so it was it was an up and down year in a sense that we never we were never really not there but um yeah we never really kicked fully into gear I think yeah, and that final you talked about against Brisbane, that was probably the tie of the finals, really. That could have gone either way. It was a nail-biter. And really, in my opinion, it kind of killed Brisbane's chances of winning it because it felt like you'd knocked all the stuffing out of Brisbane and they never fully backed it up after that. Coming so close, how did you feel at the end of, did this list, is it ready to win another flag or did it need a rebuild? Was there any thoughts in your mind that, of what to do in the off season. No, I think um, Richmond have been very clever about their list management and their recruiting over the last few years. Um, so they've sort of been almost regenerating on the run, developing in the uh, in the VFL with some good players, young players that um, are not getting a game, but developing with the same system and the same coaching. And um, you know, you've got players that have come in and played the role. You know, like. Um, uh, Noah Cumberland, you saw him come on this year, and he's been he's been playing in the reserves, and and um, he got his chance and really showed. And um, of course, we got Junior Morris Riola Junior coming through, and I think they've just sort of been doing the right thing with their list as far as developing the kids in the reserves, and um, and then uh, bringing them up when they are ready. Um, and uh, yeah, the natural um, list progression as well with. Um, Players retiring, uh, Edwards and Lambert and Caddy, and um, I think they've done it really well in the fact that they sort of have understood that and that's why they went for uh, Hopper and Taranto, which I think is just, I mean, they couldn't have done better with their recruiting over the off-season. I've got to say, as a rival of yours, seeing you lose some superstars and some real iconic names and Two weeks later, bringing big Timmy Taranto and Jacob Hopper. That is insane list management. And I thought that was a huge statement to the AFL as well. You brought in two very strong players. What are your thoughts of Tim Taranto and Hopper and what they can bring to you guys? Well, it's needs basis. I mean, we, we were getting killed, um, you know, um, in the clearances. And they just brought in two, you know, clearance machines and... Uh, it, it allows, unfortunately, probably for, for the competition, a fit and hopefully uh, happy Dusty to be more of a permanent forward. And uh, that's going to scare a lot of opposition back lines. So uh, it also frees up players like uh, Shea Bolton um, to sort of forward and midfield as, uh, time as well. So I think Toronto and Hopper are, are just what we need. And I thought the big thing as well for me was there was a lot of talk Soldo would have to leave to accommodate them deals. I thought that was a mini win for Richmond as well because I think Big Ivan is really underrated and I've enjoyed watching his development, particularly in the last year. Of, he actually looks like a force and I thought that was a big W for Richmond. A lot of people were saying he'd have to leave to accommodate them deals. I thought you were very smart in your strategy to bring them in for the price you did. Yeah, I mean, they had to give seven-year deals to both of them to bring them in, um, which, again, I mean, I don't think that... I mean, a few years ago, seven-year deals would have been, you know, they're just not heard of, or 10 years ago, but 
um, yeah, I think that they sort of even it all out. And, um, yeah, with, with Soldo, I mean, he lost his place in the side, I think, and um, he was – I think it was um, – they were trying to sort of appease him and, and, and make the deal – uh, go through a lot easier um, because I think there's there's a lot in the draft next year which um, you know we're not going to be a massive part of um, because we did trade away a lot of our picks um, so I think that kind of would have had something to do with it but um, yeah no again Richard supporters love Ivan Soldo and we didn't want to see him go well, so I mean, it's going, to be exciting. it's going to be exciting to see what you guys do this year because obviously, like you say, that suddenly that midfield is a serious threat just with the additions. And Taranto is, looks like a big Victorian player, doesn't he? He kind of he doesn't get talked about because he's out in Sydney. He does feel like if he was a Victorian, people would really talk about him. Yeah, and I think he's uh, he's a big game player as well. I think he's going to love that the big crowds at the G and with the Tiger supporters getting behind him. Um, I think he's going to look good in the yellow and black, mate. Uh, he's he's a fearsome fearsome opposition in the round one for the Blues. I've got to say, seeing them two go. The one I really like though was Hopper because Hopper is that kind of he gives me Prestia vibes. In the terms yeah. of we probably don't hear about how good he is because he's in Sydney, but he's a real fearsome competitor. And I thought he was actually better for you guys than Taranto. Taranto's got that class and that brand name, but Hopper is a workhorse. Oh, he's he's a good player, trust me. I mean, probably happier with him than Taranto myself. I think he is um yeah, no, he's 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 not even close to what he's going to be as well, which is which is scary for to think because you know they're twenty four, twenty five, I think, and um, they've got a lot of footy left in them, and and their yeah, hoppers, um, he's he's got some tricks as well, you know, he's he can um, he can kick a goal, and um, you know he's he's good inside and out, so yeah, very excited. I'm looking forward to seeing it how it stacks up round one because obviously we talked about it at the start. We did get your number this year. Um, but it's always a great opening fixture. How do you feel about that? Because obviously as a Carlton fan, I get a lot of opposition fans saying you don't deserve to be the round one opener and no no one cares. I actually think it's one of the perfect openers and it's even when we were bad, we were always quite competitive against you guys. We always used to make you wait till the fourth until you ran over the top of us. How do you feel as a Richmond fan seeing Carlton actually probably be a serious test for you guys as opposed to whipping boys? Well, I'm hoping for uh, uh, Patrick Cripps' hamstring strain just before round one. That would be fantastic um, because um, he's a player that, I mean, uh, the thing is I've kind of got a soft spot for the Blues and it's hard for a Richmond supporter to say that, um, I guess because they, in a sense, I can... Um, identify with Carlton supporters. Um, we went through such a lean period of success as Richmond supporters, and um, I can see, I, I can the passion and the the and all the frustration and the coaching changes and all the all the different. It sort of aligns with being a Richmond supporter. So I I, I love that round one uh, fixture. I don't understand why people. It might be just be jealousy in a sense that. Uh, other supporters that we get that game at round one. I think it showed even last year with the we we were the second game. I think it was a Thursday game with the um, grand final replay. Um, but it's such a big occasion. It's always ninety thousand people. It's all you know, whether, whether no matter who's the home team, um, and it's just got that noise and that vibe and that. Um, and as you say, they're competitive games. They're always competitive games, and. Um, yeah, it's a great start to the season. And again, what is it, 93 days away or something, Pom? Yeah, it's not far away. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're into the double figures now. <laughs> so, yeah, so it'll come quickly. And as a Richmond supporter, I mean, we love it. I mean, Carlton's an old rival. And, um, and um, you know, I was I was at the 82 grand final when they when they clipped us that year. And um, it's uh, it's always been always been a great, a great game. Well, you mentioned like that kind of mutual understanding of pain. One thing that I've noticed about Richmond is very similar to Carlton this year, that list management prior to your flag was kind of stabs in the dark. And I've noticed since that 2016 period, really, you guys have really nailed list management and there's been clear structure 
particularly after you've won the flag, in how to keep that list rejuvenated without killing it too much. How how does that felt like? How has that gone gone from a team that was probably disappointing in the press and the press used to pan Richmond all the time, and there was that 2016 period where they pretty much sacked Dimmer. The press did. How does that feel from then to now? What have you seen as a Richmond fan in terms of more of a professional, ruthless outfit that you've become? I think it's um, it's got to do with from the top down, board level all the way down to the coaches, to the players. I think that's where you get a strong club. We were, you know, in the wilderness for so long. And the famous quote with Brendan Gale when he said, you know, we want to have three flags, uh, 75,000 members and zero debt within 10 years. Well, we had the three flags, 100,000 members and, and and look at where we are financially as a club. So I think from the from the top down, from the president, the CEO, uh, the coaching department, the footy department, down to the players, I think that's where it, where it's gone and that is definitely got to do with list management and recruiters now a lot of a lot of, i don't know whether a lot of uh people outside of richmond have heard of a guy called blair hartley but he's been he's up there with with um the other most important people at that club to bring in players but not just the top end talent which i think most of the recruiters get that right these days i think it's like when you're getting rookie players like liam baker and Jaden short and you're getting players at the bottom of the draft like Jack Graham and Nathan Broad and um, these type of players. I mean, Shea Bolton at 29, pick 29. I mean, th- these things are just it, – it's it's a good recruiting team when, when they can get that sort of thing. And, and um, yeah, and, and, you know, we look at Noah Bolter at pick 25 and there's clubs – all the clubs could have had these players, but it's just – and I think also it's the development, the development of the players. It's so important. You see a lot of teams that if they don't develop their players right, then they just get lost and they just don't know themselves. They lose confidence and then, you know, they they just sort of go by the wayside. But I think our development of our players at the VFL level, I think, has been huge. You've been very strong in the VFL as well, Joe. You know I mean, you see, you see your side and especially in them like flag winning years, it was... Kind of heartbreaking to see your VFL side was making grannies as well when you were thinking, oh my God, there's another 22 players that can play football as well. It's not just the 22 in the AFL. You've got some decent kids. One thing I want to touch on is the Gale thing. I remember when Brendan Gale came out and said that. And I remember the media panned it. The AFL community kind of laughed at it. It's scary how that plan has been almost a prophecy. It, he, it wasn't a plan, it was fact. And that is crazy. I think that we need to see more of that in the AFL. It's something that my club, we've always skirted around the phrase success. It's almost to appease the fans and not disappoint them. I love the fact that Gail came out and said that because I think it's really backed his words, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it has. And um, coming from from... I mean, he said that he had to say that sort of thing almost just to put a line in the sand and say, look, this is where we've been and this is where we want to go to and um, was up for ridicule. But um, And, look, even us as Richard supporters were were optimistic about the future, but, I uh, mean, if you had said to any of us the reality of the last five, six years, we wouldn't have believed it at all. But, um, but as I said, it, it does come from the top. And I think that's... With the Blues, I mean, I think they've got it right now um, with where they're at, board and CEO and footy management. I mean, I think they've – they've. it's almost like that's that's what you've got to do. It, it feels positive, I've got to say. For the first time in my life, I'm not tricking myself into believing. I, I have something to believe, but allow us to get excited. What was it like, that 2017 grand final? Obviously, 2016 was such a disappointment, and I remember it so vividly. The press had pretty much sacked Dimmer. It was Richmond had failed, and I remember that 2017. It was probably the most magical thing I'd seen because you had a bit of an iffy start, and then Dustin Martin started to become Dustin Martin, and that final series was disgusting to watch it was insane how how did it feel to live that moment talk us through it well you know i mean as i said i was at the 82 grand final the lost grand final um when i was nine years of age and um and we went through uh, like the leanest period as a club and 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 just so 
it, it was so hard to be a Richmond supporter, at times embarrassing. And um, 2017 was not to be expected what, what we did. And we just, I just remember the season just being um, just so, just quality of the footy to watch. I mean, um, when we had that, just that intense pressure and we were just, um, just turned our whole, our whole game plan around. And um, I remember the, when we beat uh, the Giants in the prelim, and uh, the, the following week, talking to mates and that sort of stuff. And they say, how are you feeling? You're nervous. And I'm like, no, we're going to win this. I, I just knew we were going to win it. Um, I just knew we were going to beat Adelaide. And I was with my two boys watching it. And um, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I was a blubbering mess in the end. I, I cried my eyes out and, um, you yeah, a lot of emotion. And um, But it was just so pure and so... Um, amazing and and to get that feeling it's it's just indescribable it was it was a lot of emotion um but just the way they played was intense and then to be honest i think they were better the the year after in in 18 um but um just got pipped by that uh, big fellow mason cox who had about five minutes of good footy and that, that um was a crazy game that i do remember that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was fun, you know, and but the, the club also say that losing that game, if we hadn't lost that game, we probably wouldn't have won, um, you know, uh, nineteen and twenty because of where where it sort of put them and what they had, what they needed to do, and um, yeah, it's uh, it, it was. It, yeah, I don't want to talk about that game if you don't mind, Pom. No, no, we were, we were because I've got <laughs> Collingwood mates and Tiger mates, and I was sat in their living room watching that and. It, it was it was like having a choice of some two people to have an affair with your wife. I didn't I didn't know who to cheer for, uh, but what did Mason Cox do that to you guys? I was just like I can't believe what I'm witnessing here. I can't believe it. Uh, it was like a slow slow like car crash watching it. it. It was horrible, but I do remember that 2017. I always think it's the most perfect way to win a flag. Like as a Carlton fan, going through many years of hurt, you had. All them blips. I remember Adelaide destroying you early doors and people pretty much saying, oh, this is mental. They kept dimmer. And then you went on a bit of a run. And then my wife's team beat the St. Kilda. And I remember the question marks came back. Well, 60 and, points. Yeah. And then after yeah. that, you guys just like something happened to you. And you came out and you just started playing indestructible football, really. And it was beautiful to watch. I hate to say it as a count fan, but when you made finals... There was like a fearless inevitability about you. It was like I, I felt like you did. I knew you were going to win it from the first final. I was just yeah. like, there's no way these guys lose. Nah, it, it was. Yeah, I just had that feeling. It was. It was, and it was an amazing feeling to have. You know, after being starved of so so much success over the years, um, they just got it right. And, and again, we go back to the recruiting. I mean, the three players that they bought in which changed the club, um, you know, uh, in that one draft, um, you know, it was Nan Curvis, Prestia and Caddy. And I think that as much as, you know, we lord over Dustin and how good he is and how good a player he is, Dion Prestia is probably our most important player. And a lot of Richard supporters will tell you that. When he doesn't play, we don't win. Um, he's so important, which has a lot, got a lot to do with, as you were saying earlier, bringing in Taranto and Hopper. I mean, it's just going to make such a difference. There's something about the little meatball pressed here. I've got to say, he's he's one of them guys that you probably don't pick as a danger for Richmond, but then when you play, you, you, you kick yourself for forgetting about him. He's a little competitor, isn't he? He's a real competitor, but he's just he's so smart with his use of the footy and he brings players into the game and um, the forwards love leading up to him. He's, he's really, he's, um, he's so important to the way we play. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see him with uh, his mate Hopper. It does make it fearsome. But, I mean, we went into the draft and obviously you had that wonderful trade period. You'd probably spend all your draft arsenal. But I always look at Richmond, like you say, you're one of them teams like Geelong that have a habit of picking up players that probably aren't fancied. But you look and go, oh, dear, they're probably going to be pretty good. And you went out and got Caleb Smith and probably the sexiest name in football, Steely Green. And really? <laughs> I, I did see your tweet and you're saying, did you pick up an 80s boy band? It did make me laugh. <laughs> well, it was, what is it? Tyler, um, Caleb, Steely and 
uh, what's the, the the big the big fella from the VFL? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's pretty funny. Um, the the way that the, the the names of the players these days, but Steely Green is 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 a brilliant one. It's probably the best name in the history of the draft, but I, I did look at these players and when you picked them, I was doing the watch along uh, on Blue Abroad for that and they were literally, I remember saying these are Richmond players, do you know what I mean? Because both of them are hungry tackle pressure players, both of them are quick, both of them are relatively good ball users. They're definitely mm-hmm. two players. One of them two players is going to be a player when we redraft this are a lot, lot higher. And again, they'll just they'll they'll develop them. They'll go to the VFL. They'll they'll play two years there. They'll learn the system. They'll learn the the the, the team game plan, and and you know they'll give them a taste here and there, like they did that with little Juddy Clark this year, who showed showed a bit. Um, they brought him in, gave him a taste, goes back, um, and you know there's other players down there that still haven't played. Um, big raps on a kid called Sam Banks and. Um, he had a couple of in- injuries this year, but they've got big wraps on him. And, yeah, so those players for the draft, as I said, they'll go in, they'll develop in the VFL. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and we'll, we'll just see how they go. But hopefully we do get, you know, one of those little diamonds in the rough. It's going to be interesting because you did pick up a guy that I talked about a hell of a lot on this channel. And those who know me know that I've got a soft spot for you Tazzy boys. And... Seth Campbell in the rookie draft was the one that really stung. I was surprised he didn't go in the main draft. And he has got Richmond player written all over him, a goal machine. You must be excited about pairing that young kid as well in the VFL, seeing how he goes, because he was banging them in for fun. I think he kicked 10 in a game. 10 in a game, did he not? He's filth as well. He's, He's a pure goal kicker. And, I do think that rewalt factor is just going to really help him out as well because a little bit of home there, a little bit of experience. And he's going to, a guy that I think people are going to sleep on. I can see him debuting next year and snagging for days. Well, I thought we were going to pick him up in the main draft. I mean, looking at we, – we, he was one of the players that we were looking at. So, yeah, to get him through as a rookie, I think, was um, – we'll just see how he goes again, you know, down in BFL and develop him through. And, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And moving into 2023, where are the hopes for Richmond? What are you expecting to see from the boys? I think, um, look, because we look, we were we weren't that far away, believe it or not, from top four last year. I just think that um, it, we lost a lot of games by under a goal or uh, un, under a couple of goals, which meant you know we went from top top four to top eight, but. Um, I, look, it's going to be a logjam at the top, Tom. I, I, I think that there's not many there's not many teams that are going to drop away at the top. Um, um, but I can see us hopefully making the top part of part of the eight. I mean, our recruiting the the two players that we've recruited plus a fit and happy Dusty, um, a, a fully fit Tom Lynch, which is going to be fantastic, and and um, uh, yeah, I guess. The, just the the natural development of uh, some of our exciting players, I think that we're going to have quite a good year. There's no uh, – recruiting Hopper and uh, Taranto, it's, it's, it's by design. They're, they're ready to go. It does surprise me as well. I checked the bookies' stats uh, last week, and to see you guys third in the thing behind Melbourne, I, I did find weird because I, I did think your trade period and – the, the core of your list is still fairly young as well. Like, people forget Rewalt, yes, he's been there forever, ever, but the, everyone's in the prime of their careers, really, that you'd say a good 12, 13 of your best 22 are in the prime of their careers. I thought that was a little bit of an injustice because I do think them two statement signings, like you say, all the question marks you had last year have suddenly gone away with these two acquisitions. Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean... Yeah, a lot of the players, as you say, they're they're in their prime. I mean, Hopper and Taranto, I think, are twenty four and twenty five. People forget that Shea Bolton's only twenty four years of age, and you know he's pushing for one to be our best player. Um, so, and I guess it's the also the 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 natural drop off and the natural retirements. It's it's a turnover of a list of a list which um, 
they've been thinking about. And um, I think they're really setting themselves up to have a, a good crack at it for the next couple of years. And I'm really, really uh, confident about, uh, I might eat these words, but I'm really confident about 2023. I think that, um, I think that we're, uh, we're going to have a good crack at it. You won't be the first person on this show, myself included, to uh, eat their words. <laughs> 12, months, 12 months later. You've been known for it, Paul. Hey, uh, Collingwood fans constantly remind me that I had them second last last year. Oh, in my, uh... we, all, but we all did, Pom. We all, we all had them down there. I mean, you know, I mean, fair play to them. I must say they got two ex-Richmond coaches there, so they had a bit of a leg up from the start with um, with Fly and uh, Lepper. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's tough now. How do you feel about Collingwood, um, Pom? I mean, we have the natural dislike being Richmond and Carlton supporters, but I don't know whether it's there as much as it used to be. Do you find that? Um, I, I'd say the Collingwood fans uh, are like uh, a love-hate relationship for me. Um, they, we have a lot of Collingwood fans watch this show, which always baffles me being a Carlton boy. And I, I've got to say, some of them are nice. Um, no, don't, don't talk about the fans. We know what the fans are like. I'm talking about the team itself. Um, I, I strongly dislike them, but I'm, I'm of the school that Richmond, Carlton, Essendon and Pies, whether we like it or not, we, yeah. we need to be strong. Like, we need to be a strong side. And it's my dream semi-final as far. I think... I think that makes the game better if we're all strong. I think I, I said it to the Essendon guy who was on a couple of weeks ago. It does my head in Essendon count, and when it's basically we're playing for a draft pick, who gets the worst yeah. one? Um, yeah. I want I want round one like it is now. Potentially that's costing each other a top four. Like we might look back at that game round twenty three and go, God, if we didn't drop that, we'd be fourth. Um, yeah. We want the strength and. I think our histories are linked, aren't we? I, other AFL clubs hate me for saying it, but I think without Richmond, without Collingwood, without Carlton, without um, the Pies, there is no point in the AFL. We are the history of the AFL. It is, it's between us four. It's something different when you watch the games, isn't it? Like it's just there's something different there, which is hard to explain to other supporters that you know you're playing Collingwood and and you're playing Carlton, you're playing Essendon as a Richmond supporter and. They're the ones you want. But, um, yeah, I think um, it's just the, the, the competition becomes so much more even now and um, you just have to be on your toes because you can drop away so quickly. Mate, it, it just shows, doesn't it, how quick. I mean, you look at the Eagles. Only a couple of years ago, they were the team that many people thought were going to usurp you guys. And look at them now. that They're facing, in my opinion, five years of barren abyss at the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they've done to their list. You saw they took a chance with Kelly and tried to quickly fix the holes, and it looks like it's backfired big time. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So, Which is why we talked earlier about Richmond and, and their development on the run, which is which has been um, – which you have to do because if you don't, you put if you put all your chips in like a Hawthorne, you can see what happens very quickly. It's going to be interesting, but like I, I, I do have hope as well with – with Essendon, as much as I hate them, I think they've made the right choice. And I, I can see a world this decade where all four of us are in the top half of the table. Yeah. I mean, I'm not – I don't know. Essendon is such a tough one. I mean, they've made so many bad decisions, so many wrong decisions with with a lot of things. And I don't want to kick them while they're down, but I don't know. The other, the other three possibly – I think it's going to be an interesting one for Collingwood this year. They don't get such an easy run with the with the draw this year, and um, there's going to be a lot of people sorting out their game plan over the summer. And um, yeah, go ahead. They're a weird one, aren't they, Pies? Because what last yeah. year they you expected them to lose, and they have this horrible habit. Like I, I call them the cockroach because oh. like it, it didn't matter if you removed the head, you had to squash it. Yeah. They were, they were, and it just kept happening. So, if they if they lose all those games that they won in like this year, next year, then they're going to be out of the eight. So it's it's that tight. So I think the spots. I mean, I think I honestly think that we're going to be up in the top. I don't know whether we'll make top four, but I think that we'll go pretty close. So my prediction is probably from about three to six. I reckon the Tigers will finish this year. 
Mate, I, I think that's a fair result. And uh, it's. I'm looking forward to this year. I'm looking forward to it because I feel like both of our clubs are in a good situation. So it makes the rivalry a little bit more entertaining because I think if there's something on round one as opposed to Carlton just hoping to cost you four points and us have a day out, it actually feels like it's a proper game. It, yeah, oh, it's going to be massive. I mean, the build up's going to be huge. And um, yeah, it's it's always a big game. But as you say, it's this is for Sheep Stations now. We're, we're playing playing for these four points and they're so important. Um, the games you drop, you look back on and as you were saying. So I think uh, it's going to be huge. I'm awfully excited about it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to 2023. I did Caden McDonald uh, earlier this week and we were talking about that Melbourne game that if Carlton had beaten them, they would have slipped down to 10th. And I think we're going to have another year like that where four points could be the difference between making the A and not being making the A. I think it's going to be... I've got like 13, 14 teams that I've got just that grey of you could be a final side. Yeah. Yeah, well, you look... I mean, they there's so many teams that... I don't know who's going to drop out for teams to, to, to come in. Um, out of the eight. I mean, it's just, it's so tight for spots. I mean, um, you boys, your blue boys would have to think that they're going to not only just make the eight, but they, with the fixture that they got, the draw they got, I mean, it's pretty sweet. And I think that they're going to come in. I think uh, Richmond will stay there. I can't, I mean, what do you do about Geelong? What do you say about Geelong? I mean, they're definitely going to be there. Um, And Sydney, they're going to be there, so it's going to be it's going to be tighter than this year for sure. It's going to be interesting. Geelong, the team that just I don't know how they do it. They are the they're fast becoming my most hated side. Oh, I think just easily doing everything right. Yeah, no, and because they've got that Brian Myers who plays for them as well, so I think that uh, makes it easier as well. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, it's uh, uh, well, we'll see what happens and. Yeah, I, I, I'm just hoping for you. And I mean, as I as I've told you uh, privately, I, I um, I'm pulling for the Blues, and I I, I watch the uh, the Blue Abroad channel, and um, I just hope that they can get there for all you guys, mate. It, it, it'd be nice. I tell you, it'd be, it, it, it'd be nice. I'm looking forward to the day that my smiley face is there in September. <laughs> well, listen, mate. We'll just we'll we'll we'll, we'll see what happens round one, but. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good year, and we're, um, as I said, very excited as a Richmond supporter to see what we can do this year. I think it's, um, you know, there's going to be a couple of players where it's probably, it's definitely going to be Cotches last year, um, so they'll definitely have something to play for there, and and possibly Jacks. I'm not sure he's still playing good enough footy, Jack, to to um, to keep playing, um, but they're going to be, um, you know, list decisions at the end of the year that they'll have to make, but. Um, Apart from those two, I, I think that we're, we're looking pretty good for, you know, for our age demographic. Mate, for, I am looking forward. Hopefully we see a 2023 grand final between our two great clubs. And, uh, I don't think we can handle that, mate. I don't think you'd be able to handle that. <laughs> oh, mate, mate uh, I, no. I, I get nervous about finals footy just thinking about it. Yeah, well, you guys deserve to be there. You've done all the right things. I mean, you've got the, the list and the, and the recruiting I think that you've um, you've definitely – and you've got to make a shake at it as well. It's not just – I think you have to finish top four these days to give it a, an absolute chance of winning the winning the flag. I think it's just too hard from outside of the aid. It's been proven, I think. Um, only the Bulldogs have done it in recent times and you've got to be top four, I think, to, to win it. So that's that's the aim. That's the aim and I think that Richmond will be pretty close to that this year. Mate, I, I'm, I'm backing you in. I think you've had a wonderful trade period and the draft period and I, I think whatever you want to call it, a little reset, a reshuffle, I think it's a, a good one. But Daz, where do we find you, mate? If the guys and girls watching at home, where can we find you and come and say hello and chat to you? Well, I'm uh, mainly I'm on Twitter. So um, Daz underscore gun, at, at Daz underscore gun. Um, so, um, yeah, come and, come and follow me there. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Twitter and as you know, on game day, I'm there and, uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, you can find me on that and, um, yeah, that's about it. 
Hey, well, everyone, go and say hello. He's a good one. For a Richmond fan, uh, I give him my full uh, credit. He's a, he's a good guy. He's been good laughing. I can't thank you enough, Daz, for being here. I wish you the best of luck in 2023, mate. Thanks, Pom. It's always great. Your content's great, and I love watching your stuff. Um, you're, you're very entertaining and knowledgeable, and, um, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks.